you. Welcome. I'm, I'm very excited to, to be here at the epicenter of the second wave. I, uh, this is going to be a little dark. I, my parents are divorced. They got divorced when I was seven days old. So, like most kids, my first word was, Mama! But my next five were, Told me to tell you. <laughs> The custody battle got so ugly that the judge ruled I could decide where I wanted to live, so I moved in with the judge. Uh, but they, they appealed, and uh, they ended up getting joint custody, which basically meant that every couple days my parents would have to drive me to each other's houses until I got my license and drove into a tree. And it was a... Uh, Everything was laid out according to this legal document called the agreement. It was the last one they ever had. And it was very, it was very complex. It was very, it was a very detailed thing. Like it would say, like it would be like, you know, if, if John Marco, my name is John Marco, spends his weekends at his dad's, but Monday is a national holiday, but it happens to coincide with his mother's birthday, then how many milligrams of Prozac will he need? It got very specific. <laughs> Everything was laid out, every single day of the year, except for my birthday. That was the one day of the year that I got to decide which parent I loved the most. <laughs> and it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard, because when your parents get divorced, there's always the really, really strict parent, and then there's the dad. And <laughs> he was fun. My dad was a lot of fun. Like, uh, when, he, when he packed me lunch for school, he always cut out that morning's Calvin and Hobbes comic strip and slip it in my pack of menthols. Uh, and, <laughs> it wasn't my mom that was strict, though. It wasn't my mom, it was, uh, it was my stepfather. And I, but this is about my stepfather. Before I say anything more, I just, I just want to be up front and, and say that I'm biased because the relationship between a stepson and a stepfather is biologically designed to fail. Like, we all know the Oedipus complex, yes? Freud said that man has an unconscious desire to kill his father so he can sleep with his mother. I'm not saying me personally. I'm, I'm saying every man in this room. Ladies, when you're not around, that is all we talk about. <laughs> So a stepfather, a stepfather means instead of having to kill my dad, I just have to kill some guy my mom met at Bally's Total Fitness. <laughs> yep, they, they, they did meet at, at Bally's. They, they actually met in court because my mom married my dad's divorce lawyer. <laughs> yeah, it was part of the settlement. Yeah. That, means, that means basically he went from representing my father to filling in for him. And if that sounds familiar, it's the plot of Hamlet. So, all those facts, all those circumstantial facts being stated, I hated myself. He was the like he was the antagonist of my youth. Some kids believe in God, I believe in the devil, and he was my stepfather. He he looks like if Vladimir Putin was from Ohio. <laughs> but like, but he's taller, taller and scarier, like Putin on a horse. And he was he was he's very uh, he, he collects red wine, which is just Pokemon cards for adults. And very he's very strict, very strict guy, the kind of guy who tucks in his shirt to eat pussy. He uh <laughs> brutal. He was a brutal, he was a brutal parent. He wants he was brutal. Very tough guy. He once took me to a petting zoo and said, don't touch anything. And he wouldn't let me listen to Eminem when I was at uh, his house. And you can imagine how devastating that is when you're white. And so what I did actually to get around it, I bought uh, a Spice Girls 
Spice World CD. I threw away the CD, because I already had three copies. And I put the Eminem CD, I hid it in there, so he, you know, the only thing he thought I was hiding was my sexuality. <laughs> We didn't get along, obviously, and the thing that upset, pissed off my stepfather the most was uh, my dad's daily phone calls. Because whenever I was at my mom's house, my dad would call pretty much once a day. And no matter what I was doing, chores, family dinner, a human pyramid, I didn't give a fuck, I would, I would immediately pick up the phone, go to my room, and talk to him. And it made my stepdad furious, because, because even worse, the phone that my dad called me on was this sweet, silver, Motorola Razor phone that my mom had got me for Hanukkah, by which I mean my stepfather had paid for my mom to get me for Hanukkah. <laughs> but I didn't care. I didn't care how upset it made him because I, a day did not feel complete until I'd spoken to my father. Which is why I found it very strange that I hadn't heard from my father at all the day of my 15th birthday. And I chose to spend this one at my mom's because I felt like like you know, more than 14 in a row at my dad's and I get me kicked out of her will. So she tried to make it a fun day. We, we went to Dave and Buster's and the Penn Zoo and uh, no matter what she did, I felt stressed. I felt very anxious that I hadn't heard from my dad. Like I, I just, my mind just went down this rabbit hole of like, you know, maybe he had been in a car accident or maybe he had a heart attack or like, Aliens had to do. This was before I knew that I, what I now know I have depression and OCT. So like I'm constantly checking under the bed for a friend. Um, so my mom decided that I was so anxious she said that, oh, you know what? I know what to do after after dinner at the Cheesecake Factory to distract him. We'll all play Monopoly. And for those of you from kind of happy families, for normal families, Playing board games is just an excuse to be openly cruel to one another. <laughs> With my family, every card game was Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> Our Scrabble boards were all four-letter words. The only way to win the game of life was take your own. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom and stepfather were drinking, so it felt like it felt like some weird Edward Albee play, like who's afraid of Mr. Monopoly, and I was. <laughs> And about 12 hours into the game, I don't know if my... <laughs> I don't know if my mom had said something snippy or she had just landed on free parking, but my stepfather got pissed. He stood up and he said, you know what, that's it. <clears throat> he cleared his throat a lot. Like he had like, a lot of bullshit to swallow. And he... <laughs> and he... <clears throat> uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, no more Monopoly. I'm gonna... I'm gonna take your mark out. Get some ice cream. I felt conflicted, because on one hand, I like ice cream. But on the other, leaving the house with him and not my mother, it felt like leaving the American embassy in Russia and your tour guide was Putin. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the moment we, we get to the garage, garage door closes, I open the car door. The second that I'm sure that we're out of earshot of my mother, my phone rings. I look down and it's my dad. And my stepfather says, don't. Get in the car. We're getting ice cream. <laughs> we, I think of the first time anyone's ever said we're getting ice cream as a threat. <laughs> <laughs> so I get in the car. He starts it, pulls out of the driveway. The phone is ringing and ringing, and then it stops. My, my stepfather turns on the radio, and it's, <laughs> it's Leonard Skinner's Freebird, which did not feel apropos. <laughs> and a couple minutes later, my phone starts beeping because my dad left a voicemail, a long one, presumably explaining why it had taken him all day to call me on my birthday. So in the middle of the guitar solo, my stepfather turns down the radio. And he says, fine. You can call your dad back. But I did not get you that phone to talk to that man. So I call my dad. <laughs> he picks up on the first ring and he says, Goomba, that's what he called, he's Italian. He says, Goomba, how are you doing? How's your birthday? I'm so sorry. I, and I wanted, to, I wanted to tell him everything. I wanted to tell him, like, I'm being taken hostage.
hostage in this car right now. But I knew that if my dad found out that my stepfather was trying to, to stop me from talking to him on my birthday, he would have driven up there that night. He would have murdered him. And then I, you know, my parents would be back in court, and I'd have to testify against my own father because it's not illegal to prevent a kid from talking to his dad on his birthday, even though it should be. So I just told my dad about the really fun day we had at David Buster's and the, the great game of Monopoly we were up to and going to get the ice cream. And about two minutes later, the awning for Sprinkles comes into view. That was the name of the ice cream place. And my stepfather parks the car and looks over to me and kind of mouths, wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, told, I told my dad, you know, I gotta go, we're getting ice cream. And he, he wanted to talk longer, but I was like, you know, I, I, I can't, I just want this ice cream it's so bad right now. I hang up the phone, stepfather grabs it out of my hand, and he says, I'll be holding on to this phone for the foreseeable future. And I turned to him and I said, You're just mad that my dad fucked your wife before you did. <laughs> So the whole trip was forgotten. We got back home. I told my mom everything. And for the first time in her life, she like stood up to me. She was like, you know, well, I'm gonna take tomorrow, but we're gonna drive to, 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 my, to my brothers. And, and I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe in the morning you're drunk right now. And, and my stepfather said to her, he's like, oh, let's, talk. <clears throat> let's talk about this upstairs in my room. And my mom turned to leave. My stepdad turned to leave, but then he turned back to me. And again, Mother out of your shot, he looked at me and he said, you're disgusting. And I said, no, I'm 15, motherfucker. <laughs> um, I didn't say that, I just was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> but that would be so cool, I think about it a lot. I should have said. But I, I, I look back at it fondly because like, I am Jewish, but I never had a bar mitzvah, and like, for me, that was the time that I would say I felt like a man. <laughs> Years later, uh, I I would say the, the summer before I went for left for college, um, I was in my room doing nothing, and uh, my my stepfather knocked on my door, and I, of course walked in without waiting for a fucking answer, and he said, uh, <clears throat> uh, "Hey, uh, Jamarco, you wanna you wanna go for a job?" And I was like. Oh, yeah, sure, maybe on the way back we can get that ice cream. Uh, so I went out with him, and, and this would be the first of many jogs I would have with my stepfather, and they all pretty much went like this. We would jog for about, I don't know, three blocks, and then he'd go, hey, uh, <clears throat> let's walk for a bit. <laughs> Why is your mom so unhappy? And I was like, I'm 17, motherfucker! Jesus Christ! I'm just trying to get into college and get my dick sucked. Can I please have a childhood for 10 seconds of my life? But we grew closer, one very awkward jog at a time. And as I got older, the things about me, about him that bothered me as a kid ended up becoming like a real asset. Like his, his real like buttoned up strict nature made him a very good person to have in my life when I dealt with uh, insurance and taxes and uh, lease, which he is the co-signer on now. And it turns out I really like red wine, so we had that in common too. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to like put a little button and bow and say I, I've forgiven him or I've even processed what he meant to me for that span of my life. But I do know that my birthday was this, this last August 20th, and my stepfather was the first to call to wish me a happy birthday. Thank you.